we are here to discuss the Canto Aura Active Desktop Speakers with James Larson. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. <laughs> Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with Audio Hawks. We got James Larson in the house. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. So we got you a pair of probably the smallest speakers you reviewed for Audio Holics. And just to give people a kind of preview of what this review is all about, we're kind of deeming this the best sound per square inch you can get for the money. Would you say that that's an accurate assessment? Uh, I mean, I haven't reviewed too many small speakers, but so far, yeah, that'd be you can't do better you know for for the i guess the square or the cubic inch i should say yeah it's really good for the cubic inch so we're talking about the canto aura desktop speakers these are very diminutive size and you can see them behind james right now they're 350 dollars a pair fully active they have no crossovers in them no analog crossovers these are fully dsp controlled speakers look at that james could pick it up with one hand yeah it's not it's unusual it's only a couple pounds i guess it's not a big speaker and it's a dust well it's a desktop speaker so it can't be big because you don't want a big speaker taking up too much real estate well most people don't want that so they have to be small but there's a lot of technology in that little speaker if you look at it up closely you could see that it's it's got a waveguide on the tweeter right it's got a what is it, like a three and a half inch or three inch woofer yeah three inch paper cone um 50 watt system there's a uh, amplifier in there um 50 watt system in total each woofer gets 16 watts and then each tweeter gets nine watts so 50 watts all together um it has a bunch of um um inputs it's, it's it's active of course and it has an active uh crossover and um dsp and stuff so it has um our uh, analog RC, uh, RC, rca inputs a USB C input um bluetooth connectivity and um it can even has a subwoofer output so yeah, that's a pretty a cool feature on. to have on, on a little speaker like this. And then when you use the subwoofer output, it actually base manages the speaker. So that's pretty neat that it does that automatically. Yeah, if you hook it up, it senses it, and it automatically high passes the speakers to 100 hertz. So that nice. really gives those little three-inch uh, woofers uh, a break, you know. It helps. Well, another thing we got to give props to on Canto is their their speaker stands are awesome. I think they're primarily a speaker stand company that just happens to make speakers. They make some really nice... Uh, speaker stands there as you can see with these and these could screw onto the speaker so they make a very nice stable connection on your desktop yeah um i don't know if they really screw on maybe you can I actually have one right here too um no there's no screw on uh, at least for the stand that i have this is from canto also but there's a rubber mat and the way that the speaker is held it would be really hard to knock them off so like, that's um, weird because the ones i have from canto you could screw it into the bottom of the speakers there's no threaded insert on the bottom of the speaker no, this is just too small of a speaker. I, I don't think they have to worry about it. I think the speakers that you have are like bigger and heavier. So that's more of a concern. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm coming from the YU6 and the YU4s and those could screw into the stands, but apparently these are too small, like you said, and they don't need it. You said there's like a rubber gasket on the stand so it holds it in place. Yeah, it, there's, it's, it's a small light speaker. You don't have to worry about it uh, flying off. Um, yeah. And here's the packing. The, here's how they come. They're packed okay they don't need super like um heavy duty like poly uh ethylene foam block packing because they're, they're small light light speakers they can take like two pounds 2.2 pounds of speaker yeah they can take shock and like um the rigors of shipping a lot easier than a heavy speaker with like you know with more mass and inertia so yeah, yeah. and there's what they look like obviously you can see what it looks like behind us the inputs um, so one speaker has the amp built in and it just powers the other speaker. But, oh, so it's a master and slave, basically. Yeah, but each driver is separately powered too. So you see the like, like umbilical cord kind of connecting yep. the speaker out, speaker in. So like it still has that DSP um, active crossover. Like a lot of these type of speakers don't do that. This one does. So um, they have passed. How long is the connecting cable between the speakers? It was about six foot or so. Um, it's actually right in front of me. Um, I want to say five, six feet, something like that. Yeah, it, it, it spans. I mean, I've got like a, what, a 30, 40 inch monitor in front of me. And like, it, it's more than enough room to like, you know, have a nice 
connection without any tension. So it's gotcha. it's not good enough for any monitor, basically. There's a close up of the tweeter and a, and a waveguide that's a soft dome tweeter. The speaker has some kind of internal structure. The, the outer shell isn't that thick. You would think it's kind of cheap from tapping on it, but there's an internal structure that uh, actually uh, is more a part of the, more uh, the speaker's enclosure than the outer shell. And so you can see there's a, a slot port that goes that takes a 90 degree yeah. turn. It's flared on both sides. So yeah, it's it's kind of um it's a little complicated, you know, but um it, it seems to work well. So some engineering in a budget uh desktop monitor for sure. Sure. Normally we pre we preface this uh, slide with like measurement conditions, like if I was doing a bookshelf speaker tower speaker, you'd have, you know, like a picture of it like you know mounted outdoors, right? This mm -hmm. is all I just did it at a half meter and I couldn't use the stand I normally use because it's too big with respect to the speaker, right? So I did it indoors on a very on a, like a small stand that didn't have any reflections and I did it uh, measurements at a half meter. So you could oh, do okay. that indoors, but you know, you do lose um some a little bit more low frequency resolution than normal by it's still fine, like below four hundred hertz maybe it's not it's too smooth to really matter, right? But above that, it's it's pretty good. And so this speaker measures very well. Um, it's it's relatively neutral. See, there does it holds pretty. Um, I would say it adheres pretty well to like a plus or minus two dB window from like twenty kilohertz to like two hundred hertz. You know. Yeah. It's it's really good, and this is one of the advantages of um, an active you know DSP uh, crossover. It can like you don't need like passive parts to like smooth out the response. There's no room for passive parts in the speaker. The small, so like um. It, it does it all through a digital trickery, uh, equalization base, basically, and it gives you a really, really, really good response. This is a neutral speaker. It sounds very tonally balanced. Yeah, and, that's, I mean, I, I, most desktop monitors that are several hundred do dollars more than this would wish they could have a response like this, you know? Yeah, this this could be in a space that, um, I think this is kind of the higher tier of desktop monitors for what it is. like. Um, most people buying de well, not not monitors. This is these are desktop speakers. Monitors are a whole different ball game. Have I been saying monitors? I meant to say speakers, right? It's probably me that use that term. Yeah, these are more these aren't considered more speakers like for consumer consumer speakers, not not monitors. You could probably do monitor work on like like production work on these because they're so linear and they're so yeah. balanced. They just don't have a whole lot of dynamic range, like a monitor. Yeah. Mo monitors normally have like five inch woofers or more, you know, eight inch woofers, or, or so. No, but yeah, these are more meant for like a near field listening environment on a desktop or, you know, in a small, small room kind of environment. Yeah. So like they're really good. Like I said, you could use them for like production work if you weren't going to crank things too loud. So like they're so linear. They're better than a lot of monitors. They really are better than a lot of monitors I have dealt with. Yeah. Um, here, here's the, um, the horizontal dispersion, I think the horizontal frequency responses from zero degrees to 90 degrees. It's just really good. There's no, there's no bad news here. This is really good. The off axis responses have a very good correlation to the on axis response. So like it's, it's going to sound the same no matter where you are with respect to the speaker, um, which is good because um, you have like a relatively wide listening area on, on a desktop speaker, because, you know, if you shift your position a little bit, that's a lot of degrees with respect to the speaker. They listen to um and so this is good news yeah well you know in your review we have the written review online if you guys want to read it i'll put a link down below but some highlights that james said is the auras are very tonally balanced and accurate loudspeakers you know if you look at the listening test he gives you all the details of how he really enjoyed the speaker so i do encourage you as a supplement to this uh youtube discussion to actually read the written review written review it's quite lengthy because you also included their eight inch subwoofer uh, in this review. Yeah, so they sent a sub with it and um, we're not gonna get into that far in the weeds or I'm not gonna talk about the subs here, but the speakers are kind of the star of the show anyway. Um, yep. It's really good and, and here's another like uh, depiction of the, the previous graph. The same, it's the same information being shown, but instead of lines, um, we're using colors to indicate amplitude. It's kind of a top down look and so it's very even, very linear, like out to like 60 degrees. It's a, just a nice solid response. And um, the, you know, dispersion is very well controlled. It's a it's relatively wide dispersion loudspeaker. Any any small speaker would be. 
and this maintains this um, dispersion really well. Here's the here's a um, a waterfall graph of the uh, vertical dispersion, and this is really good too. This has a really wide vertical dispersion for the type of speaker that it is. It's like you could. I think this is important for desktop speakers or monitors because how often are you si sitting at your head is like the exact same height all the time, right? Me, sometimes I'm sitting up, sometimes I'm slouching, right? Right. For for a normal like bookshelf speaker, like you need to be kind of like plus or minus ten degrees on axis of the tweeter, but that's not you know that's not going to happen all the time if you're like me or like a normal person who's always like sitting up or slouching down. So these have a very wide vertical dispersion, and um, mm -hmm. so yeah, you could you could uh, adjust your position not just with left and right, but up and down, and they're going to sound the same. So that's a big bonus with these. And, and here's another uh, like a color, a polar map of that same graph. Here it shows you how much like how much degrees of freedom you have on the vertical axis before it starts to shift the um, tonality of the sound. And it's like I would say 20 degrees down to like maybe almost 20 degrees up, which is much better than most like, you know, two way speakers or that, that that's not a concentric or, you know, full range driver. So this is a, this is really good design here. Just good news all around. Here's, yeah. um, here's a, a, a measurement of the low frequency response. And this is pretty amazing that uh, this little three inch woofer speaker, you know, it, it has legitimate bass down to 50 Hertz. It really does. Yeah, and I think you said it had more bass than the monacoustic super mini mon, which were like two grand a pair, right? Um, yes and no. It has deeper extension, but it has, doesn't have nearly as much dynamic range as that does. Mm -hmm. That has much like more robust drivers. That's actually a uh, what do you call it? an isobaric kind of system, right? So it, it it was capable of more output than this thing is if you fed it, you know, the, um, enough amplification because that was a passive speaker. But yeah, this this has more extension than that. That that and, and um, you, I th I think you still you'd still want to use it with a subwoofer, but if you didn't have one, you had no room for one. You could get by, and they sound fine. But you know, if you crank it, if you turn the volume up, then the shortcomings, you know, it, it compresses the bass, and and you'll notice that if you start rocking hard, you know, without a subwoofer with a speaker. Yeah, and you know, I've I've got experience with the sub eight because I use it with my YU sixes, and it's definitely a necessity for any of these little. Uh, kind of desktop speakers if you if you're a bass head like me especially not that the eight inch sub is going to shake your room but it does provide that nice you know 10 hertz more extension with more output than you get from just the speakers itself oh it's it's a big changer it's not just the extension it's the um amp the, the headroom that you get because like, it's yeah. so much more capable over like from like say 100 hertz down below than a three inch woofer it uh, really changes the system but like I said, this has pretty good, um, you know, pretty good extension. If you don't have room for a sub, this does pretty darn well. You know, bottom line, pros, easy to use and set up, which this is. You can have a, a range of connectivity for these things, and it, it all works well. And, you know, for, you know, in my own use, I never had a single problem with it. The tonality is really good. Like, these are better than a lot of studio monitors I've actually uh, measured and listened to. That's really good. Imaging is excellent. Um, I, we didn't really go too much into the like like uh, my subjective impressions of uh, how they sound, but that's in the review. So like we're, we're just kind of digging into the measurements a little bit here. But if you want mm -hmm. to hear how how I um you know uh, how I felt like they sounded to me, you know, subjectively, that's in the review. So check that out. Um, but that they image really well, and of course they're small and uh, unobtrusive. They need to be because they're desktop speakers. But we've, yeah. we've We've used some larger desktop speakers before, but I think they would be more of a niche product because they don't leave as much room for like, you know, people, desktop real estate tends to be pretty valuable, you know, so. Yep. Um, yeah, so that, I some, could be some competing loudspeakers. Um, audio engine, HD3, audio engine is pretty good. I don't have personal experience, I've never reviewed one. I've heard of them on several occasions. They t tend to be pretty good. And that audio engine HD3 is kind of direct competition with these. I think they'd be pretty good, but I don't know exactly how, you know, they compare uh, head on. There's the Monoprice MM3, which has similar specs. Um, I think those are slightly larger. They're, they're, they're a lot cheaper. Are they as good? I wouldn't guess so, but you know, they're a lot cheaper. Well, none of these are active with, pa most of these options here are passive crossovers, I'd imagine. I 
think I, I don't know about the audio engine. I guess the mono prices. I think the Cali audio, um, which actually we, we're scheduled to do a review. That's a new product, the Cali yeah. Audio LP UNF. We're scheduled. I haven't received them yet, but that I think has an active crossover. I'm not sure. That's probably one of the closest competitors to. That's a like, little bit more into. geared toward like pro work um, or prosumer work because I think it has like balanced inputs. So like it's more for that sort of segment, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I mean, I think people will be cross shopping those. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, that's the end of the, our live stream. So like they're pretty darn good for what they are, you know, so it's like good little speaker. And I guess they're a little expensive compared to a lot of uh, desktop speakers, but like that's it's worth it. You're paying for a lot of technology. It's, it's well, I think what, when I read your review, I think you were really impressed using it as a, for gaming on your desktop. You know, it really enhanced your gaming experience just using it as a 2.1 system. And I'd imagine a lot of people buying a speaker like this, they're going to put it on a desktop. They're going to do some gaming. They'll listen to music, of course. But if you're looking for a 2.1 system to enhance your gaming experience on your desktop, this is one of the best bets in town, especially because it doesn't take up a lot of space, like you said. Yeah, th th that's really what's more convenient. You've seen a lot of these ultra widescreen monitors. They've become more popular, like 35 inch, 40 inch monitors and, and much bigger even. These are really good for that because, you know, where, where are you going to put a, a speaker or a full size speaker on a desktop when your monitors are so big, right? A lot of people, I guess, use headphones, but I don't want to listen to headphones all the time. I prefer speakers. So yeah. these, these definitely have their place. And if you want good speakers on a desktop, yeah, they cost a bit more than the cheap stuff you can find on, say, um, Newegg or Amazon, but it's a truly good sound, you know, that they're getting. So I, I really like them. And, I, you know, it's what I would get if I were looking for, like, a small desktop speaker. That, um, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been impressed with Canto. We're going to be doing some more reviews for them. I have the Tukes, um in-house that I want to take a look at and hopefully in the near future. But James, I appreciate you bringing all the knowledge on the speaker. Again, guys, I do recommend you look at and you read his written review on the Canto Auras with the Sub 8. He shows it as a 2.1 system and how he listens to music, movies, and gaming. It's definitely worth a read if you're on the market for these speakers. And we'll put some affiliate links to our channel partner, Audio Vice, down below. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me. And James, again, thanks for coming on here and uh, doing the slide presentation and giving us more details on this product. No problem. Well, until next time, my friends, keep listening.